outside of uh, Landry and Gaff. Everybody was a, at least a partial participant. Were you holding anyone out for injury reasons? Oh, oh no. Um, you know, Denny had a little bit of back tightness, so he was able to do quite a bit of it, but we just wanted to kind of monitor, make sure he didn't overextend himself. What was, what was the overall take on day one, just on both sides of the ball? What did you like? What do you want to see improved and build on? <laughs> no, I thought the energy was terrific, um, and that's been great carryover for us. Uh, kind of through the open runs, we've seen those guys get after it. Uh, great energy. Um, got through some of the drill stuff, and then when you go live, of course, you know, Lose a little purpose, uh, you lose a little bit of the carryover that we want. And that's to be expected in day one of a, a training camp. There's, there's a lot of new things for a lot of new guys. So um, overall, very positive, good first day. It's just uh, we know that you know, we've got a lot of work in front of us. What specifically did you like from Cruz today? Uh, well, he was playing a lot of different positions, you know, and I think that's been one of his strong suits. Um, you know, making decisions with the ball, the quarterback in our offense, playing in the open floor. So. A lot of the, what we've seen already and to, to see carryover from last season, uh, it's a huge positive. How will screen setting work this year with Chris Stapps gone? Uh, well, he wasn't our only screener, but right. uh, you know, I think we still have to make sure that um, you know, it's a high priority, creating an advantage on or off the ball. So if it's ball screen, uh, if you're screening to uh, create separation for a catch and shoot situation, uh, we've got to make sure we read levels, read the, how the defense is uh, guarding us. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's got to be a priority for us to uh, help each other out there, whether it's cutting, screening, uh, making the extra pass, all those things that I think come into the team, team ball. I think um, defense comes up when we've been asking you and Will about what you need to see from Kuz this season. What does he have to do to take the step? I think Will said he wants him to be more of an, an anchor. Yeah, you know what, he's been, uh, we've seen it, you know, in the last two years. Um, he, he's, he can be elite, you know, with his ability, his size. Um, we have to find a way for him to, to get more consistent. And, you know, some of that's just, you know, maybe taking a little less of the onus of the offense. You know, now you have a little bit more legs to lock in and, and defend at a high level for, you know, as close to 48 as possible. Um, but, you know, he's certainly capable. And I think that's just not on him. It's on us as a group to make that more of a priority. Sorry, this is a dumb question, I know. Never a dumb question. What you, consistency on defense? Is that just effort thing? Is that sometimes. you need to see stops every single time? That's no, I mean, you're not going to get stops. Great offense, oftentimes, is going to be great defense. Um, but can you take something away? Can you can you make a team be beat us? Um, it's overall disposition, you know, as, uh, as part of the competitive piece. But it's also, are we disciplined with our technique? Uh, are we talking and communicating, you know, the way we should? Uh, all those things, you know, tie into being a great, you know, defensive, you know, great defensive team. What was Bilal's first day like? He was good. You know, I thought he was a little quiet, a bit shy early. Um, you know, got a couple deflections, turned, to, turned into steals and open court opportunities. I thought that helped get him going a bit. Um, there's a huge learning curve. You know, we're throwing a lot at guys and moving from one drill to the next, one station to the next. Um, so he's processing a lot. So, you know, once again, grasping it in small setting and then, you know, translating that into five on five play, sometimes it, it, it's a hurdle. How do you? I mean, I know he came from a different pro league, but all any rookies coming from a different league. How do you guys introduce the new rules and make sure they get them down quickly? Slowly, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, reinforce it. Day, you know, every day. Um, sometimes we have to teach on the fly. And, uh, you know, correct. You know, in live play. Once you get them going, and the guys start playing live. You certainly don't want to stop it, but we still have to make sure we find ways to correct and teach. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes in, over the summer and, and for the franchise and all around. How does that uh, illustrate how you? coach this team that has that is young and that is trying to make a name for itself from the ground up? Oh, it's a different group. So, you know, I have to kind of leave, you know, the past in the past. You want to pull some of the positives that we, what we saw late in the year and, um, you know, reinforce those. But, you know, we've got eight, nine guys that are, that are new to us. And then some of the things we're doing schematically are new to the guys we had last year. So it's a lot of newness. So we know it's going to take a little bit and we have to make sure to prioritize the most important things. But, um, you know, we have to ride the wave a little bit and, and go through some bumps. Um, that's how you get better. You talk about Kuz's defense, and Jordan has uh, in past times been maligned for his, but he has shown like abilities to be a defender with his size and stuff. Have you seen that, and how do you coach him up on that end of the floor? Well, I think for a guy who's won a championship, you know the, you know, the priority of defense and what, what that can do for a team. 
Uh, so he's well aware of it. He knows he's, he's played at the highest level on the biggest, on the biggest stage. Um, but it goes just back to you know, making that part of his DNA, every possession of every game. Um, you know, maybe that's not something that he prioritized in the past, but it's something we have to encourage him to do. He's certainly capable, to your point. He's got the physical tools to do it, um, but it's, it's got to be a priority. How, does, um, how much of a role does accountability have on a young team that's trying to learn habits and, mm -hmm. and uh, proper techniques? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's big, you know, and the accountability isn't just myself, the coaches. I think getting those guys to be with accountable, accountable from within, um, holding each other to a higher standard, you know, and to do that, you have to police yourself first. Then, you know, you can be the example in the room for other guys around you. Um, and that takes time. To, to, to do that, you have to know what that thing is. Uh, so we have to set that standard. We have to hold guys accountable, you know, to start, but then it starts to proliferate through the locker room and take a life of its own. Last year, the team entered the season with a more veteran core and hoping to reach the playoffs. This year, it's different. It's more of a developmental year. How does that impact your ability to try to hold guys accountable? I don't think it changes much at all. I mean, obviously, um, our timeline's a little different, you know, but the sooner we, we get uh, accountability in the locker room, we get our core principles and foundation laid, I think the, the better we will will be. Um, it's still going to take some time, but we're at that. Um, we'll find ways to celebrate those small little victories, those moments that uh, I know Mike and Will spoke of. Our guys are aware of that, and some of those measures might not be obvious to the general public, but we'll know, and we'll, we'll continue to celebrate those. Hey, Wes, at what point? During camp or maybe the preseason, do you start looking at situational five-man units that you might like? Um, we already have. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know gives us the flexibility right now in training camp. A little different, I think, than last year because we you know, we're compressed with you know going to Japan and so forth. Um, we have what feels like more practice time, and doing that it allows us to play with different com com um, combinations. Excuse me, and um, toy with some different ideas, and, and I think that's it's great for this group. You know, to put them in disadvantaged situations, um, make them play a different way, uh, kind of figure it out on the fly. Um, that's going to give us an opportunity to see what works, what we like, what they like, and what's most effective for each, each of our guys. What does Patrick Baldwin Jr.'s untapped potential look like for you and his staff? Uh, he obviously has the, he's got the shooting piece. I think he can be, uh, you know, a rim protector, a positional defender. Um, he's going to stretch the defense with his shot making. But I think there's more layers to that, you know, for him. And, you know, for a guy who's 20 years old, uh, he's got a lot of upside. Coach Gallagher said a couple times yesterday that he's going to try to play a little bit more of the five. Uh, did he try that today? And how do you feel about him trying to perfect that area of his game? Yeah, you know, you know he's, um, he's going to be a stretch big regardless. You know, his ability to shoot the three, it's been his calling card. Um, it puts, you know, most um, traditional bigs in, in a bind. Uh, but... He's, he'll embrace the physicality of that position. I think it's uh, learning what we do tactically. You know, I think he's aware of what that is. It's just what we call it. So getting those reps under his belt, uh, being able to quarterback the defense from a different perspective, from the bottom up, talking to the guards, articulating commands, um, kind of a traffic cop. It's, it's, it's just a different spot from his vantage point, from being spaced or out on the top of the floor. Mm -hmm. Just a list of those five. Hold on. Uh, I'll, send, I'll send you an email. Thank you so much. <laughs> Only to Ava. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You, you mentioned uh, last week that some you guys are going to be doing some more different schematic work. What, where are going to be the biggest changes? Uh, mainly in the pick and roll. I'm not going to get into the detail of it, but primarily um, how we're guarding pick and rolls, um, pr prioritizing our paint a little bit more. And I thought we had an uh, elite level rim protection last year. Um, don't have the same roster composition, so I think we have to prioritize our paint. What was the uh, biggest thing you learned about this team during the last month when you guys were working out? Um, I just I love the group that we got. Um, we got high character guys, um, and we got a lot of shooting. Got a lot of shooting, gonna be able to space the floor. Um, and yeah, just exciting to build uh, build with the with the group we got. Now that it's in a formal context of training camp and not a pickup game for Bilal, what did you see from him today? What do you expect? Yeah, um, 
high high energy, high motor. Um, he moves effortlessly, um, just like he gets up and down the court easy. Um, great athlete um, and great instincts, uh, both both offensively. Obviously, everyone knows defensively, but offensively as well. Um, and he'll be able to continue to build off of that, um, just learning the NBA game, um, learning what his spots are going to be, things like that, figuring out the offense, obviously. Um, so I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him to start to continue to put it together um, on both ends of the floor, and he'll be um, a great weapon for us. Organizationally, what did you like from today, and what do you want to build upon throughout this week? Yeah, I just think it was a good first day. Good first day. Obviously, early on, it's just a lot of um, teaching, a lot of you know putting in the offense, putting in the defensive schemes, um, guys kind of learning their spots, things like that. Um, but everyone was locked in, uh, paying you know attention to detail uh, was huge, and um, everyone was just really focused. And, and that's that's how you learn and get better, um, and that's what we're going to need day in and day out. Uh, and so it's just I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for the for the journey to, to get you know started. With a young team with a lot of new guys that is measuring progress and little victories, uh, how does the team and the coaching staff foster accountability? Um, you're always um, accountable. You got, you got to be held accountable, um, and they're going to do that. Is you know going to do that? Uh, that's not something that you relax on. Uh, you know, even though they're talking about, you know, patience and things like that. Um, and that's something uh, we've, we've talked about. It's like, you know, there's there's going to be a process of, of learning, um, you know, figuring stuff out, being patient. We've got a lot of young guys, but at the same time, um, how you grow and how you learn is holding each other accountable. Um, and everyone wants to be held accountable because we all want to be the best version of ourselves um, and the best version, uh, you know, of the Wizards. So. As this team has sort of a new regime with trying to build a new identity and a, and a focus, are there things that you're taking from Memphis, from Minnesota that you want to transport here when it comes to things like that? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been on winning teams. I've been on losing teams. Um, and so for me, uh, it's something that you see. You kind of get, get to see what works um, and what doesn't work. Um, even on some of those winning teams, you, you start to figure out like what, what doesn't work all the time um, and things like that. So um, I try to bring some of that here uh, as well as some of our other vets, you know, Taj, Mike, uh, Gallo. So it's like they've, they've been around, they've been on winning team, playoff teams. Uh, they've also, also been on losing teams as well. So we're trying to just bring, bring that and use that as our, you know, leadership um, and build and also just kind of create our own culture here at the same time. Yeah. Guys, what's the kind of standard you want to set? as the point guard on this team when you deal with veterans and young players trying to apply their skill sets together? Yeah, just meshing, honestly, just meshing, getting everyone on the same page. Um, it's, it's good to have that, that mix of young guys and vets, um, especially the vets we got here. Like I said, Taj, Gallo, and, and Mike, um, just great professionals to learn from uh, for our young guys. And then, yeah, just meshing and gelling, trying to get everyone on the same page, um, just accepting the process and, and the journey that we're all on together um, as, a, as a unit and um, just embracing that. Assistant turnover ratio is a big thing with you, mm -hmm. right? Everyone yep. talks about it. But how much is you vocalizing what you see out on the floor? Being a coach out on the floor is important for you. Yeah, it's extremely important. Um, that's just my brand of basketball. Um, and I feel like as a point guard, um, it's my job you know, to um, try to have that um, kind of trickle down to everybody else. So um, trying to just preach and, and communicate to everybody just playing the right way, but also at the same time, it's lead by example. So if, if it starts with, you know, with the point guard, um, playing unselfish, uh, making the extra pass, you know, good to great shots, things like that, it's easier for everyone else to kind of buy into that. Um, and at the same time, vocalizing it, talking about it, um, acknowledging when someone makes an unselfish play, um, acknowledging, you know, when things are happening. So um, that's just what I try to do. Um, I've always done that, um, and I can plan to continue to do so here, um, just, you know, with a, with a bigger role. Coos, what were the biggest takeaways from the first day? Just a lot of learning, a lot of getting on the same page, being connected, um, especially from a defensive standpoint. You know, it's one thing to be in the gym all month in an open gym sitting, but now being in a team environment, you know, understanding uh, rotations, understanding you know where to be defensively, low man sinking, uh, v backs, like those type of things. That's 
um, the progression that the coaches really laid out for us today and uh, moving forward is going to be important for us. Coach, you talked about your versatility on the floor. How did you feel individually and in terms of how you were setting up your teammates a lot? Uh, I mean, it was good. Obviously, like I'm excited about this year. You know, I think we have a team that's going to play really, really fast. Um, you know, get up a lot of threes because we have shooters. But it's about you know just like you know, you know, playing under control. And I think that's something that we're going to learn uh, as time goes on and preseason goes on. And you know, it's um, it's going to be very interesting. You know, how we uh, we gel and uh, expand throughout the next you know three four weeks. So. But Law's first day, this was really like one of his first days because he hasn't been playing five on five with us too often. Um, he was dealing with something, but uh, he made some couple of good moves. And obviously, you know, he's going to, you know, be a willing defender out there at this point. Um, and that's where he, he lays his hard hat right now. So, you know, he's uh, he's got a bright future. He works hard. He listens and uh, he's a very focused and mature to be so young. So. Formal context of training camp instead of just playing, you know, more informally pick up. What have you seen from him? What do you like about his game and how you guys mesh? Well, I mean, it's only been one day of training camp, but um, you know, I think for him, he's uh, he's very um, explosive score because he can score in different ways. He can shoot anywhere from the court. He's very fast and get downhill, and um, it's going to be fun. Obviously, today we played on different teams, but you know, his next progression is just you know making others better because. Um, you know, when he has the ball, people are going to know he wants to shoot and score. And um, that's okay. And that's a good thing because that means your teammates are going to be more open uh, from a d defensive perspective. So, um, you know, he's going to be great. This is his first time in, in this type of role and, you know, playing off balls for so many years. It's going to take some time, but um, he's young and he loves the game, he loves his craft. So, Kyle, with your expanded role this year, how much are you applying? building habits with the young players on this team where it might not be the win today, but kind of building towards something. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's all about our habits right now. And yeah, you could say, you know, it's not about the win today, whatever, that's cool. And, you know, a lot of people don't really have expectations for us, but in between the lines, you know, everybody's very competitive. And if you're competitive, that means you're putting yourself to win every single night. So, you know, naturally, um, Sometimes you're going to lose, and that's okay. But as long as you're, you know, losing the right way, that kind of makes sense. And like stick, sticking, like being process driven, uh, we're going to give ourselves a chance, and then that's going to give us confidence to, you know, be connected and play on the string, or play on the string, on both sides of the floor. Yesterday, you talked about you spoke to a lot of people about leadership, but I'm sure that you've already had traits of leadership before that. Yeah. What was it like, kind of coming out here today, knowing that? You might not have to like wait for somebody to ask you your opinion, and you can kind of vocalize what you see on the floor. I mean, it's a little bit. It's definitely. Uh, it's definitely good and being in the situation I'm in. Obviously, uh, just feeling free, uh, feeling like um, you know my opinion matters, and um, that's what we all want as players and human beings. You know, we want to feel uh, respected and and that we matter. So, naturally, um, you know, I'm not going to say much right now. I'm not talking nobody's head off. You know, we're a young team, and everybody wants to like. You know, fill themselves and get out, and go, and you know, it's the first week of training camp. So, uh, you know, I think the main thing today and you know this first part of training camp or preseason is really about just getting familiar with each other because it's a long season and we could be here all month. That's only one month, and um, you know we got a long ways to go too. So, how does the team foster a, a spirit of accountability? Does it come from the coaches? Does it come from the players? No, it comes from the players, and uh, everybody here is really um, high character and cares about their craft. And um, you know, it's all about not wasting somebody's time. You know, at the end of the day, because um, you never know. You may have teammates that are, you know, hold themselves very, very accountable, and they want the best for themselves and their careers. So, you know, you should, you know, want to help your teammate out, help them out, and vice versa. So, um, you know, it's it's always about policing yourself first. Because if you don't police yourself, then uh, it's not really going to be a team. So, what's the, biggest thing, what's the biggest thing you've learned about leadership in, over the last few years since you've been here, and like how do you think you can apply that to this season? Uh, man, I mean, everybody's different. You know, every you can you can't talk to everybody the same. Um, you know, some people 
you do good with criticism. Some people, you know, you need to be soft with. Some people you need to, you know, just grab by the shoulders, give a hug, you know, those type of things. So, uh, but that starts with actually knowing your teammates and, you know, being real with them. So, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's not really an overthinking thing. I'm just being myself, you know, and, um, yeah. What was it like? Meeting Dave Chappelle this summer and showing him your yeah. tattoo. Uh, I knew, I actually knew Dave for like the past couple years. Um, he didn't know I had this tattoo, and it's funny because I, I had got it maybe five days prior, and then out of nowhere I got a text like, "Yo, Dave's doing a private showing um, in LA," and I just popped up uh, with my girlfriend. And I, I had it already on my leg, and we stayed after, showed him, and he was just, you know, it was good. It was fun. It was fun. He was shocked. Offensively, when to go full on 100, and then when to facilitate to your teammates. Uh, I mean, you know, that's all about the flow of the game. I think right now it's all it's, uh, it's about like figuring out, you know, positionally and, and how we're going to run things and how we're going to do things. You know, today was really just about defense and you know, getting into shape really. So um, you know, that's going to come a time. But you know, I've been playing in the league for a little bit, so. Just understanding, um, you know, myself and reading the flow of the game. You know, uh, if I got it going, I'm gonna keep going. But if not, you know, sometimes you know, you, you have to get off the ball to uh, want to get a teammate a shot, but also open yourself up in the future. So, with Bilal, can you see the potential defensively? And if so, what is it? What is the potential? Um, yeah, I think he has a lot of potential. I mean, he's so young. Uh, he's long. He's athletic. He's agile. Uh, he's smart. He's mature. I, I don't see why he can't. Why? He, why he, if he fails, it's on you know uh, on us. So, you know, he's going to reach his potential short sure, because he wants he wants it. So, what do you think about the potential of him, Denny, and you can include yourself in that conversation? The switchability. It will be nice for sure. You know, that's you know three willing defenders that you know will defend. So, uh, you know. Being, uh, that'd be huge. How tall do you think Bilal is? Bilal, hmm, like six seven, maybe six yeah. eight, something like that. Six, six, but... He got an afro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I might put him two inches.